attempted. Well, I think that's been one of the most exciting parts of the mission for me the, on my two previous flights was to back away from the space station and see the element that you've installed and you've seen the station grow before your very eyes and know that you were a part of it. It's also kind of a dramatic thing to realize that it's just a snapshot. While we're doing assembly, the space station visually looks different with every assembly mission. Joining Commander Milroy is first-time flyer George Zamka. He sees this mission as an ongoing learning process in space. I, I view the uh, space station as, as a, uh, a springboard to follow on space exploration. Uh, while we're on uh, the space station, we're learning how to live in space, how to work in space. We're encountering problems as we encountered uh, earlier this summer. We're coming up with solutions and we're learning from it. And uh, that's what the space station is going to provide for us for a good long period of time. Spacewalks will be an important part of this mission. Veteran astronaut Scott Parazinski will be joined by newcomer Doug Wheelock outside the station for their assembly tasks. Doing my spacewalks with Scott Parazinski, who is just a tremendous man and, and uh, just a been a terrific mentor for me, and I, I don't know how I could learn it from anyone any, any better. You know, he's just, uh, he's just a wealth of knowledge for me. Mission specialist Stephanie Wilson brings her skill for working both the shuttle and the station robotic arms like giant space cranes at a construction site. The arms move the station parts to their proper place for installation. You know, they compare uh, similarly. They're both, of course, developed by Canada. Uh, the station robotic arm has the ability for either end to be a grapple fixture or to be a base. And so we can do this walk-off maneuver. And so it uh, does have gr a greater capability than the shuttle robotic arm, but the, both arms are, are uh, fine to operate. Mission specialist Paolo Nespoli not only represents the European Space Agency, but also his native Italy, where the Harmony module was built. This will be, of course, the high point, one of the high points of my life. I'm also uh, very proud from a professional point of view. I'm grateful for these opportunities, and I'm great of, grateful also because I can uh, go in space with a piece of, uh, of the Italian industry that represents the work and the commitment of a thousand of people that work for this, and for that I'm very grateful. Joining the shuttle crew is astronaut Dan Tani, who will participate in the spacewalks and remain on board the station as a crew member. Together, the crew will face one of the busiest work schedules NASA has seen. When their mission is done, the station will have reached a major milestone in its construction. After our mission, the subsequent missions will finally bring up the uh, European Space Agency's laboratory and then the Japanese laboratory, uh, their contribution to, to the station. Naming the, the Node 2 Harmony uh, is, is actually um, very appropriate because it, it will bring us together finally as an international partnership um, in this cooperative effort. This station assembly mission, like those that came before, is the result of many people working behind the scenes to ensure mission success. Many hands have worked on the Harmony module prior to it reaching space, beginning with its initial construction in Turin, Italy, and continuing at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where it was further processed and ready for launch. The ride to the station, the space shuttle, must undergo thorough processing and testing before each flight. Making the flight as safe as it can be is a matter of pride among those who prepare the spacecraft for its journey. At the Johnson Space Center in Houston, other trainers and engineers work behind the scenes. Late in the planning process, an extra spacewalk was added. STA-54, a putty-like material, is to be tested in space by the astronauts. Analysts need more data on whether or not the substance can be used to repair a damaged tile in the shuttle's thermal protection system, which must withstand the extreme heat of re-entry. It's a team effort for trainers and astronauts to meet the last-minute addition. Uh, I know it's an enormous amount of work to prepare for an additional spacewalk, and in particular the uh, mission operations uh, folks that support our flight, Dina Catella and Allison Bollinger and, and others that uh, work the, the detailed timelines have been working incredibly long hours getting ready for this. And, um, you know, 95% or more of every mission is accomplished uh, on the ground 
uh, before the flight by people other than the crew. In fact, in fact it's probably 99% or more. Um, I consider myself almost a, a bit player in, in the grand scheme of, of this really challenging mission that we have before us. Beginning with the small satellite that changed the world and made competing nations invest time, energy, and talent towards space. And continuing with the cooperative efforts of today, which push innovation and creativity to make a permanent home in space. Exploration beyond our world demands greater and greater achievements for those who choose to meet the challenge. I think the future of human space exploration is never ending. I, I don't see that people will ever stop wanting to reach out and understand more about the universe, uh, to explore, um, to look out beyond us and try to get as big a picture as possible. I think that we need to expand outwards into our uh, universe so that we can get a better perspective on our own Earth um, how what our role as humans who live on this earth really is and what our place in the universe is. And so I think that will never go away. Discover Houston, no response required. We're just giving you a heads up. Orbit 3 is turning over to Orbit 1. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Shannon. Okay, have a great day. You too.